Hi there, I'm Matt Vandihar, Pioneer Field Agronomist from Central Iowa, providing an update regarding the later part of July here in 2024 for portions of Iowa. And here's some three things that I'm gonna look at here in soybeans in the later parts of July. Number one, we're talking about fungicide and insecticide applications and staging that for R3 timing, which is the best timing. And so as I look at soybeans, as far as, as, far as staging, I'm looking at, uh, at the top trifoliate that has leaves separated. I'm gonna start counting down, one, two, three, four. And I'm looking at the fourth node, and I'm gonna look around and see if I have three sixteenths of an inch pod developed on that node or above. I just have aborted flowers so far. They may turn into pods, but there's no three sixteenths of an inch pod there at that node, so I'm still at R2. I'll probably hit R3 here in another week or so because I can see pods starting to develop in the lower nodes, but R3 is a wide timing too. So be thinking about that and that timing. Um, understand that there are different fungicides out there as far as what they can control. So if you are concerned about white mold, um, sometimes fungicide timing on that needed to happen uh, around R1 and R3, but look for a fungicide that does have some activity against white mold if that's something you wanna control this year. As far as foliar pests, we've got Japanese beetles, we have bean leaf beetles, we have uh, grasshoppers out here. As I look at through a field, you know, I'm gonna look at defoliation. I have a large hole that's most likely going to be a, a, uh, a grasshopper. And then I've got smaller holes that look like bean leaf beetles. And then as I look through plants, I certainly have some that add up to a lot of Japanese beetle feeding that end up being uh, wide parts of the leaf, but I don't have 20% defoliation. If I did have 20% defoliation across the whole field, I may move up that fungicide insecticide application to control those pests economically. The third thing I'm thinking of are these big yellow spots. We've had saturated conditions, and honestly, these roots never got a lot of oxygen to them. They never got a lot of root mass to them, and their nodules may be inactive due to the lack of oxygen. And I know we've been trying to dry out each week as we go, but certain soil types are just not handling it very well. You may have some other fertility or lower lying uh, compaction issues that may compound that, but in general, those yellow areas, you need to just take note. And I know we can't just put in tile overnight, but those might be some areas that you might note uh, that when it's uh, uh, feasible for you to get tile in those areas, they may benefit greatly from it. And so it's just a, a wet saturated condition um, that we haven't seen in a while for some of these uh, acres and some of these soil types that's certainly causing some of those yellow uh, areas and, and shorter plants and stressed out plants. So take note of that. So those are three things we're looking at here in late parts of July. If you've got any questions about your soybeans, about fungicide decisions, let us know here at Pioneer. Thank you. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.